What's up guys? My name is Dr. Antonio Webb, an orthopedic spine surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. In this video today, I'm going to be talking about the downsides of being a spine surgeon. So, I just finished my training about four months ago. Just started my practice, in private practice here in San Antonio, Texas. And even though I love what I do, I'm really enjoying being in practice, being in attending, and kind of doing what I've imagined doing since the first day of pre-med and also med students, uh, there are some downsides that I think students that are interested in, it, in this particular field should know. And as a disclaimer, this video is not to discourage anyone from going into the field, not to discourage anyone from going into orthopedics or spine surgery. This is just to educate everyone, to let you know that these are things that you have to think about. So the first downside of being a spine surgeon is the duration of training that it takes to become one. It's a long time. I can't think of any other profession out there that requires you to go to school for 14 to 15 to 16 years to finally get done. It takes four years of college, four years of medical school, and then six years of surgery training to become an orthopedic spine surgeon. That's a long time. And for most people, for a lot of people, that's almost half of their life. If you imagine spending half of your life in school or in training, and then finally you're able to reap some of the benefits, that's maybe because you have all these student loans, then that's a long time. So that's my number one kind of downside of being a spine surgeon. The second downside of being a spine surgeon is that the hours can be very hectic. Well, during your training, you're gonna do certain rotations. For orthopedic surgery, residency, you're gonna do rotations in foot and ankle surgery, and hand surgery, and trauma surgery, and spine surgery, oncology, pediatrics, and so on. Throughout your training, there's gonna be fluctuations in terms of how busy you will be. Some rotations are busier than others, some residency programs are busier than others. So on trauma rotation, you can expect to work sometimes 80 hours, sometimes 100 hours per week. Other rotations, like maybe like pediatrics, may not be as busy, but this also depends on where you're doing your residency location. Some residency locations may not have that many pediatric orthopedic surgeons that can train residents. So there may not be enough cases or they may not be as busy as another program that may have 10 pediatric orthopedic surgeons. That rotation at that program may be a little bit busier. But once you're done with all your training, the hours can still be fairly hectic and fairly busy. Most people coming out of their training, they do take what's called call. You don't call for certain hospitals you're on call for your particular patients. So in private practice, anything that happens to any of my patients at any time of the day or any time of the, uh, the night, uh, they can call me. So especially if you are in practice by yourself. And that's why this is something that I will talk about in future videos that it's beneficial to have senior partners around that way that you guys can help each other out. You don't have to round on your patients every single weekend and you're not always on call. If I go out of town, let's say next weekend, um, I need to have someone that's here, physically here in San Antonio, that can maybe take care of my patients if they were to go to the ER and they say, hey, Dr. Webb did my surgery and my wound is draining, I have a wound infection or Dr. Webb did my surgery and I can't move my arm because there's a hematoma, which is a collection of blood pressing on my spinal cord. So in spine surgery, there are procedures, there are some complications that can go wrong as well that uh, you have to be readily available for. And if you are not in town, there should be someone that should be able to, uh, that can cover you uh, during your absence. So. In spine surgery, that's one of the things that you have to think about. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. 
that goes on this goes into my third kind of downside is there a lot of risk and complications with spine surgery when you're dealing with the spinal cord you're dealing with the nerves uh, the spinal cord is very unforgiving which means if you if there's a pound of pressure or there's a lot of pressure on your spinal cord it can cause irreversible damage the same thing that happens in surgery when i'm decompressing someone's spine and i'm using certain instruments that are uh, going in and they're slowly taking off and very meticulously taking off the pressure off the spinal cord and whether this is a ligament or a piece of bone or a disc herniation i have to be very careful because if i push too hard that can cause some damage uh, to the spinal cord depending on which location of the spinal cord whether that's in the cervical spine thoracic spine or lumbar spine so the risk in spine surgery are very high a lot of things that we do it requires a lot of training the screws that we put in the spinal cord are sometimes put into the bones in the spinal cord within a few millimeters of that spinal cord or some important vessels like the aorta or the vertebral artery if you damage or injure those vessels that can be very devastating for patients so the risk are great but i think there's even greater reward as patients do really well if their surgeries are indicated properly so the third downside is that complications can be very high in spine surgery and you have to be able to be very accessible so if i did a surgery just this past week at any moment right now if i were to go out to dinner with my wife or family or friends and then the er calls me and say hey dr webb we have your patient here it is my duty to go see that patient um, in a very timely basis so that's a downside then we can get into academic versus private practice versus being an employee i have another video about that and i'll put that right up here but if you are in a group with other doctors or if you have residents or if you have a PA, well, those people can help you uh, go see a patient or do certain things when you're out of town. Well, I'm in private practice. Luckily, I have other doctors that I work with that if I go out of town, I'll just tell them, say, hey, can you keep an eye on my patients over the weekend? Uh, but if you're in a group by yourself or if you're the only spine surgeon, that may be very difficult to do. The fourth kind of downside of being a spine surgeon is that you're always on. Even when you're off, you're on. That means even when I've done for the day, go home and then spend time with my family or have some dinner, I'm always in the back of my head, I'm always thinking about that patient. If I had a surgery last week, um, I sometimes at nighttime it goes through my head, going through the steps of the surgeries in my head, what can go wrong. Even after I completed the surgery, I constantly asked myself, like, hey, did I do everything properly? I hope this patient doesn't get an infection. I hope this patient doesn't get a blood clot or has, or has a heart attack. All these things can happen after doing surgery. And as a surgeon, I'm constantly thinking about uh, what can go wrong and what I should have done. So I guess it's maybe my personality, but I imagine other surgeons that are out there kind of um, have this similar type of personality. This is compared to other specialties like maybe like anesthesia or emergency medicine. When you go into the hospital and then you do your shift as an ER doctor, well, when you go home, you don't have that patient that can call you in the middle of the night and say they have uncontrolled pain from the surgery that you did. You can leave what you have done at work, you can leave that at work and then separate that from home. And certain conditions and certain procedures, certain specialties, um, it may be difficult to do that. If you're an ER doctor and you had a bad day, you had a patient that, that died, you're doing CPR, you may think about that at home. But it's not like as a surgeon, I'm constantly on, I'm constantly thinking about my patients and I'm also thinking about things that can go wrong or things that I need to do for that patient. So it's one of those things when you're choosing the specialty, that's one of the things that you have to take into consideration. And the fifth and final downside of being a spine surgeon 
is that we operate at multiple hospitals and also there's a lot of traveling that's involved. So depending on the patient's insurance and also how sick the patient is, how many comorbidities, whether they've had a heart attack in the past and I need to do their surgery at a heart hospital because I think that patient will be better suited there, well, that hospital may be 20 minutes away from me. Another hospital that I have a second surgery of that day, this patient may need just a decompression of their lumbar spine, and I can do this at a surgery center, so I'll have to travel from one hospital to another to go do both of those surgeries for the day. And after certain surgeries, um, say for instance, I have three surgeries in one day, I may have a surgery at this hospital, a surgery at this hospital, and have to go see patients at this hospital over here. Just because of insurance and how sick the patients are and where I think as a surgeon, my judgment, where that patient will be best taken care of. So that's another downside. It's a lot of driving. One of the hospitals that I work at here in town is about 30 minutes away from where I currently live. And just this past week, I had two surgeries. One was at one hospital. The other one was at a second hospital. And my office location is at another kind of area of town. So I had to drive to one hospital that was 25 to 30 minutes, go see a patient that I did surgery on, drive to the second hospital that was another 20, 20 minutes away to see another patient that I did surgery on. And then I had to head to my office to start clinic by 8 a.m. Everybody's practice is a little bit different, whether you're a private practice, employee, or academic center. Some surgeons are able to just do everything in one particular hospital or clinic location. But I do know a lot of spine surgeons who have four office locations, or it may have three office locations and they operate at five hospitals. So it can be very hectic. It can be, be very uh, demanding and time consuming um, as a spine surgeon. So these are the downsides that I think, um, you know, students, if you're thinking about this field that you should think about. This is, video is not to discourage anyone from going into the field of medicine. It's a great field, it's a great career. I love what I do, I love the surgeries, I love the patients, and um, th these are just things that you need to think about. What are some other downsides of spine surgery, orthopedic surgery, if you are an orthopedic resident or an attending, or of your specialty? What are some downsides? I would love to hear from you. Thank you everyone for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.